static data masking. It's done through this little dashboard here. So we open it up. The first thing that we need to do is connect into the database that we want to mask. And this is all controlled via a little text file that you need to create. Um, so this is going to be the same if you're connecting to a flat file, a database or something like XML. It's all just defined within the connection document. So I'm going to connect to an Oracle database which is called bank underscore E. Um, so we connect in. And once we connect in, it's going to read from the catalogue and it's going to provide us with a list of tables on the left hand side. So if I select personal customer details, bring that over, I can now start to select which columns I want to mask and then apply a masking rule. So for example, I could say my customer date of birth and I want to adjust that date of birth by a selection of days but ensure that the age remains the same so I'll say five and that will modify the date of birth by five days up but if that makes them slightly older then we'll switch it around and we'll take away five days and let's say I also want to take my customer surname add that and what I could do here is pick a random list of values and we could pull a random value from a seed file or a database but we want to keep this consistent so let's say we want to hash on a list of values and we want to pull from a file of last names and we want the hashing column to be the customer ID so what this means is if we're masking our Oracle database and we're masking a customer we can use the customer ID as the hashing column. So our Oracle database will look at the customer ID and resolve a last name. If we're using something like a SQL Server database and we want to mask a customer and it finds the customer ID, it will again use that customer ID to decide what the outcome of the masking value will be. So you can maintain that referential integrity across databases or across the same database if that customer ID and that last name do occur more than once. So I'm happy with that. I have to find some masking rules. The next thing I want to do is go into my options and specify some options around the mask. So it's a pretty extensive list, but we don't need to go through them all, just a couple. We can add in some auditing. So do we want to audit every single thing that we're masking or just a sample selection? So every 100th row, every 1,000th row, or maybe just the first 10,000. So this complies with all of your auditing. The next thing we want to do is specify an audit file name, so just call this demo audit.csv. Now we could change the location of that if we wanted and put some password protection on there so the wrong people don't start looking at the auditing, but I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment. Audit values, I want to show both my old and new values so we can show some comparison when we're looking at the mask. And then finally we can move down to some parallel processing just to make sure that we do get a really nice fast mask running. Finally move to our summary. This just gives us an overview of what we're actually building. We can create a little batch script on save so once we've run this once it's actually held as little assets that can be reused over and over again. We could move that into an automation process if we wanted to um, and just for ease of use people can just hit that back file and they can run it. But that's all well and good, but let's say somebody has already defined one of these and I want to reuse it. So we can actually go back to our masking and open a saved mask. So I've saved one already. Hit our saved mask. And grab demo. So in demo I actually have hashing of my last names using the customer ID, but this time I'm actually going to use a random email address, create a new random email address. Move to my options, again I could open an options file so let's grab that, demo options and then we can move to our summary. Now hit save and run, again it's going to ask me to save the two files that I've just created just to, in case I've made any changes. Save those off and then we're going to get a little screen showing us how far our masking is going. So, masks complete. Just a, a quick overview of what we're looking at here. We get a little bit of information around where we're connecting to, some information around what we're actually going to do. So, the personal customer details table, column surname will be masked by hashing the current value, 
and using this to consistently pick from a seed list which will be last names so if you had any doubts about what you've defined it will echo that back and show you and then you can see here you get a full log of what's actually occurring when it started what's being updated and when it's finished so you could save that off you could print it if there are any problems you can stop during the mask but we're going to close because we're happy with what we have so close that off next thing I want to just show you is the audit file that that's created so I'll go to my folder my audit files and here I have a demo audit CSV open this up and this will just show you the comparison between the two values so we have our old value our new value the function that was used and then the information around the table and the columns